Hello everyone and welcome to my automated control block tutorial. Uh, the plan for this video is to quickly cover the very basics for new players to understand what ACBs are and how they work, and then jump in with some examples that might interest even the more experienced players, hopefully. Uh, timestamps, chapters, and all that good stuff below as usual, and without further ado. So, automated control blocks have an extremely large number of functions. I'm not going to explain every single one of them, though I will provide concrete examples, and there's a good chance that I'll make more videos about uh, more interesting and specific applications. Anyway, so you can find the ACBs under the control tab in the menu, or you can use um, the new search function in here to find them. So you could type ACB or I believe automated, yeah, automated control block will also uh, yield the desired result. So the concept of ACBs is quite simple. They keep checking if something happens. That's the first tab if you open the Q menu. This is a conditions tab. This is what it's gonna keep checking all of the time to see if it's true. And then it will implement what you put in the second tab, the action. So the placement of ACBs matters. Um, if you place ACBs next to each other like I have right now, and you select only a condition and no action, for example, then the ACB that's next to it will check for that condition in addition to its own condition. And you can do the same for actions. For example, here I have an ACB that's set to uh, if no object is found, uh, it will release smoke from smoke dispensers. And then the other ACB next to it is a timer for every one second and it will set chaff emitters to something. And because they both have both uh, a condition and an action, then nothing's happening. But if you look here, it says if no object is within blah, will release smoke and set chaff emitters. And this one you'll see, it says it's a slave action ACB that sets chaff emitters to whatever. So that's how this works. And you can do the opposite here. So you can have two conditions, which is arguably more useful. So in this case, if there is no object and every one second, it will release smoke from smoke dispensers. And this is just the other condition without an action. So there's both conditions applying to this one action because they are next to each other. And you can keep making a big chain of ACBs. And as long as only one of them has both an action and a condition, then everything that has only either an action or either an, uh, a condition will connect to that one ACB. Historically, placement mattered even more because your only option, if you only wanted to affect a few blocks, was to set a limited range. So if we go into the action here, we'll see range four and one block control. This is for a fire weapon uh, condition or action rather. And if we hit test, we can see that only one of the missiles uh, fires. Uh, this was useful for decoys and you can still use it. Um, for example, if you're a bit lazy uh, about the other function that I'm about to show you, uh, there's still ways to uh, use this uh, meaningfully. But uh, if you wanna do things differently, you can use the naming function. So if you use Shift N, you'll see I can rename this controller to Missile, for example, and then go into this ACB, set it to Weapon Systems, Fire, and right now you see it's controlling six blocks. But if I type Missile in the search pattern, you'll notice that it's only controlling one block. And if I hit Test, oh, I added, yeah, I added an S by mistake. There we go. If I press test, then only this missile fires, even if that one is closer to the ACB and none of those two fired either, which presumably is a lot better because then you can put the ACB anywhere, somewhere protected, ideally, and it will only fire what you want. It will only trigger the blocks that you want to trigger or control, uh, whatever action you want to do, regardless of range, regardless of placement. And finally, you have a bunch of um, smaller features, if I can call them that. There's the uh, Enabled button right here, which allows you to simply turn on and off the ACB at all. Uh, you have the ACB name that you can uh, type in that way, or you can also use the Shift N function, as I mentioned before. You can test fire it. You have this special view here, 
which is color coded, could be pretty useful. Uh, you can copy paste the contents. And there's this priority thing, which I haven't used in a while, but basically it lets you decide, for example, if you have ACBs that are likely to get triggered on the same frame, you can determine the order in which um, the things are gonna happen uh, using this priority function. And then finally, you have the timing functions at the bottom here. So the difference between the two is that the one for minimum activation interval is going to trigger immediately. And then if the condition is still true, it's going to wait at least that long before it triggers again. The effect delay is always going to have a delay when the condition becomes true. And that's it. Basically, it's not going to fire before the delay is over. And now for a practical example. This is something I used on a lot of my hover tanks. And so basically, if we break it down, uh, you'll see if there are missiles, blah, 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 we'll turn ACBs on. And you might think, well, usually when I use flares, I would have this condition if there are missiles within a certain range and fire weapons, and then you can rename your flares and whatever. And whenever your vehicle detects missiles, it'll fire the flares, right? But that only works if you have uh, munition warners that are still alive and able to detect the incoming missiles. And presumably, if there's a vehicle firing missiles at you, it's just going to keep firing missiles for the entire fight, even if your munition warners are destroyed. So what I do is that I use this to turn ACBs on. And you'll notice there's a name in here, flares, and it only turns two of them on. And then there's another one to turn them off. So if there's no enemy, it turns that off. And the flare ACPs are these ones. So right now they're disabled. That's why the condition is not true. But if they were enabled, if there's no object within uh, zero and infinity, this is always true, basically. So if this uh, ACB is turned on, it's going to be always true. And it's always going to fire my flares. And I have basically just a duplicate to offset uh, my different set of flares. And that's just it. So the ACB here is renamed flares and the other ones uh, have flares in their search pattern. And then the way I offset them, because both will turn on at the same time and they're always true, right? But then I have one that has zero effect delay and the other one has 10 seconds delay. So it's gonna fire my two uh, flares on the left, presumably, I don't remember. And then it's going to fire the two flares on the right with 10 seconds offset. And that's how it works. All right, so that's going to be it for ACB's 101. Please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful. Leave a comment if you have questions or if you would like to suggest topics for future tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.